Hi, I'm Sabina. Uh, Eli. Shelby. And Oscar. And today we're talking about Hinduism. Okay. Hinduism is an in the Indian Dharma or a way of life, and it's practiced in South Asia. It's been called the oldest religion in the world, and it's hard to tell when it first started because it's so old. And Hindu synthesis, 500 BCE and 300 CE, post something period. So, um, some of its traditions trace back to the prehistoric religions, um, like these ones. And it's a combination of various Indian cultures and traditions. Because it's so old, like it combines with others also. And um, it has no single founder. Okay, so this is a timeline of different religions. Uh, we have Hinduism first, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, and Sikhism, and uh, Christianity. Christianity is right in the middle, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Hinduism growth and expansion. It started out as part of Indian culture and history, and it is now worldwide with 900, over 900 million followers. India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Pakistan, United States, um, and Canada are the countries with the biggest Hindu population. Um, Hindu temples nearby. There's one in Fayetteville and another one in Kerry called the Vent Swara Temple. And then 0.7 American population is Hindu. And 79.8 of the Indian population is also Hindu. Okay, so this is a map of uh, where in, or, uh, Hinduism began. It began uh, in India and it spread toward uh, Singapore and all these other countries, Thailand, Burma, and it's mostly in India today. So Hindu beliefs, um, it has, there's a lot of different variations, so like it can be, some people believe in some parts of it and others, like Christianity, and um, they think that the truth is eternal, and Brahman is truth and reality, and the Vedas is ultimate authority, and that everyone should strive to achieve Dharma, and that individual souls are mortal. Okay, so I had schisms and sects, and first I kind of wanted to set the premise so there were no misunderstandings about the difference between a schism and a sect. And to put it briefly, um, a schism is, think of it like a fork in the road. So you have the main religion, but then you may have a religion that forms out of that religion. That would be a schism. And with a sect, they're all Hindus. They're not a different religion, but they may have different um, beliefs, minor beliefs. So think of it like Christian denominations. So even though there are a lot of different um, cultural variations, it, you know, the way you practice Hinduism can be different depending on where you live. Um, but the four main sects of Hinduism are, and per forgive me if I butcher these pronunciations, Shaiva, Vaishnava, Shakta, and Smarta. And I'm going to briefly go over like what the differences in those are. So Shaivas believe that Shiva, which is a god, is the creator and will ultimately be the destroyer of the cosmos. Um, Vaishnavas believe that Vishnu is the supreme lord, and they actually have many different names for the same supreme, which is Vishnu. Um, Shaktism is goddess-centric. They believe God to be feminine, that the reality of God and truth is feminine, and that the, um, I can't remember how to pronounce it, Davi, I think, or Deva, is um, supreme, and that is the goddess. And then Smartism um, believes that the ultimate form of the divine, the ultimate form of truth and reality in God, is Brahman. And we'll actually get to um, more on Bra Brahman in a minute. So with some schisms, um, Buddhism is younger than Hinduism, and Hinduism has had significant influence on Buddhism. Um, the founder of Buddhism was, was Siddhartha Gautama, um, known to the world as Buddha, and was a wealthy Indian prince and likely a Hindu. Um, some similarities to Buddhism found in Hinduism is that both religions believe um, in different ways that all living beings will eventually reach some state of enlightenment. 
Jainism. Um, it's widely believed that Jainism was derived from Hinduism. And the main pillar of Jainism is nonviolence. Um, Lord Mahavira is venerated in this religion. And he taught that the soul exists, and this is interesting, or it was to me. Um, so Hinduism and Jainism have this in common. They worship um, Lord Mahavira, and they believe that the soul exists. However, though they share this, Buddhism doesn't. In Buddhism, there is no soul, there is no self. Um, and then with Sikhism, this was born out of the Punjab area of South Asia, um, around 1500, um, current era. And they, one of the main reasons they broke away from Hinduism was out of a rejection of the caste system, which is like a social class order. Um, and the founder of Sikhism is Guru Nanak, Nanak and you know, his faith, uh, Sikhism, began when he began teaching a faith that was distinct from Hinduism and Islam. And something that um, you may find notable about Sikhism that you may already know is that both men and women head cover in that religion. And so then with Brahmin, um, Brahmin is kind of hard to explain, but essentially it's the highest universal principle, um, the ultimate reality of the universe. So it is God, but it's not, for instance, think of the Christian God, who's a personal um, gendered God. It's a, a male uh, God, but Brahman is genderless, infinite, eternal, more like a force than it is a personal God, and is the cause of all that exists. It's kind of an abstract concept. Sorry, I skipped one. So for Hinduist extremists, there are a lot of extremists just like in other religions, and they support violence, and there's also a lot of allies in the government, and it's currently led by the Bahajira Janta Party, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and so they had a lot of attacks on Christians, and in the past decade, the attacks have increased on Christians, and especially during Christmas, the attacks on Christmas Day have also increased. Um, Graham Staines, he's a Australian missionary who worked with leprosy patients for four decades. He was a victim of Hinduist extremists along with Muhammad Gandhi, or Gandhi, and um, he was killed by Nathram Godsey, who was an extremist, who killed him because he thought that Muhammad's um, peace ways were like too slow and weren't changing fast enough. And um, there's a lot of Australian extremist propaganda where um, Hinduism is big at, so that's how they get the word out to each other, and it makes hatred for the missionaries grow. Um, for our object, we chose the kindi, and we did this because we really wanted to do something that was like sacred to them, and they thought that water was really sacred, and the kindi is used in a lot of um, ritual ceremonies, and um, it's believed to have spiritual cleansing powers, so um, they use it during the puja, I think is how you pronounce it, I don't know. And that's a prayer ritual performed by Hindus, and it's, devotional, it's a devotional worship for a lot of de um, deities. And then the in one thing that I thought was interesting about the kindi when I was reading about it, um, the man that uh, uh, invented it, and what was his name, Al-Kindi, mm -hmm. he was actually Arab and he wasn't a Hindu, and when this was... Um, invented, it was not invented for any religious purpose. It was just invented to carry water, and, you know, whatever you might use water for. Um, and it was later adopted by Hindus and then used for holy water and, and puja and things like that. And then there was about al Kindi. Okay, so the earliest Kindi was found in India and it dates around back to the second mill millennium. And its purpose was, like she said, originally just to hold water in and for drinking, and it wasn't religious at first, but it was later adopted to hold holy water, and it still is. Uh, some obstacles we faced, uh, the time time frame for the project, uh, and absences. Sometimes there we were missing a few people from the group, and it was hard to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And the background research was kind of difficult with the religion. This is complicated. It's kind of hard to find all the information that you need, and that's accurate. And uh, building the kindy. Yeah, like we choosing the kindy is yeah. kind of hard. And we're going to play a video real quick, if that's good. It may be easier that that is a touch screen. Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, okay. What is 
the video Here. tell us? It's about the Ramayana, which is a, uh, oh, that's right. That's right. it's an epic. It was written, I believe, a few thousand years ago, and it's a very important document. We love the text, not only because of its beauty, the language is very beautiful, the poetry is very lovely, emotions that are represented in it are very deep and compelling, the characters are very striking and remain in one's imagination uh, forever. The written work Professor Robert Goldman speaks so fondly about has been the focus of a 40-year labor of love for him and his wife Sally. As scholars of the Sanskrit language, the couple just completed the seventh and final volume of a modern English translation of the Ramayana. It's the epic 50,000-line Hindu poem written 2,500 years ago. India and the Hindu world's most beloved and countlessly retold story of the god Prince Rama. Exiled from his homeland, Rama braves through an odyssey in search of his wife Sita. She's been captured by a demon that Rama must overcome before taking his place as ruler of a utopian Hindu kingdom. Thrilling battles, hyperbolic stories of flying monkeys and people hurling mountains at each other, ten-headed demons. The significance of the Ramayana is that it has an enormous impact on the religious, moral, social, literary, and political life of India from antiquity to modernity. Creating Ramayana's translation was an unexpected odyssey of its own for Goldman, who embarked on the quest while still a pre-med student at Columbia University. Something about the Indian culture just fascinated me deeply. So I asked my professors, you know, what, what else I could take, and they said, you should take Sanskrit. Goldman went to India and started reading the Ramayana with his fellow grad students. That's when the idea to create a modern translation of the original version of the poem took hold. That was it. On days we're not teaching, including the weekends, we're often here in the office working from early morning until it's almost, you get too tired even to read another line. Alongside teaching students about the Ramayana, the Goldmans directed an international consortium of scholars working on the massive translation. With each volume, the couple held fast to their vision for a Ramayana written in contemporary English, but remaining true to the original. So we read about 10 translations, about 12 commentaries, along with the principal text. We try to see if we can agree on the most accurate translation and what sounds most proper in English. Now, with the final seventh volume complete, the Goldmans feel a bittersweet contentment. We would be somewhat regretful to let it go and see the last chapter closed, but I think there'd be a tremendous satisfaction to knowing that this is a really major work of world literature, which is very, very little known in the West, to have that uh, available for general readers to try to understand uh, what Indian civilization is all about. This is a map of the percentage of the Hindu population, mostly concentrated in India. And there's another picture. And that is a Hindu, or, yeah, Hindu temple in India showing all the Hindu gods. And there is all the gods as well. Uh, yeah, and that's a old painting of uh, Rama is in the, there in the middle. And she, uh, Vishnu is the preserver of life. He's right there, I believe. Okay, so, and citations. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so with the kindy, the kindy? When was it used for, like, um, I guess, for, like, replenishing yourself from sins? It's a poem. 
It's a really, 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 the really, candy. really long poem. No, the candy. Oh, the candy. Oh. Yeah. No, it what was, was your like. Question? Oh like, my was it when you said it held like holy water? Would they use it for like to like replace, like to cleanse their sins or something? Yeah, it was like to cleanse you spiritually, and um, yeah, basically. What caused your religion to split up into separate parts? Um. Well, with Sikhism. As I went over, the one of the main reasons that Guru Nanak, besides his own personal beliefs, um, that he split from Hinduism was to do with the caste system. Um, and like I said, the caste system is um, a social order, and he found that to be um, not founded in any truth that he could find, so he split from it. Um, and then with the other religions, um, one of the differences between one of the defining differences between Buddhism and Hinduism is. Uh, the belief of self and of soul. Buddhists don't believe that there is any soul or self in um, in the way that Hindus do. In Hinduism, there is a soul and a self. So, those were just a few of the reasons that some of them split off. Okay, let me go back to your very first slide. Yes. Post what religion? Vedic. Thank you. Don't ever yeah, yeah. say post something. You should have come to me sooner. It is post Vedic. What are the Vedas? Scriptures. They're like, um, the Rig Veda is like a scripture. But what are the, the Vedic people? Yeah, where, where do we, what are we talking about when we're saying post Vedic? Um, like after they were gone. The so basically you didn't really tell us where Hinduism really came from. Do you know? Um, yes. In so far as I could understand, and this wasn't, my main slides were um, the schisms and sex, so the rest I was kind of um, briefing over. But from what I could understand, when I was looking for like who is the founder of Hinduism, where did Hinduism start? Um, I couldn't really pinpoint, you know, an exact like Hinduism started here with this person yeah, kind of in yeah. this city because, you know, Hinduism was formed out of Indian culture in from thousands and thousands of years ago, and so it's kind of impossible to say like, oh, well, it started here because there is no one founder, there is no like one set time that you can say, okay, well, I think it, it started this year in okay, this well, place. Okay, let me ask you, who brought, in what, who or what brought Hinduism to India? Well, wasn't it the uh, Aryans from, yeah. Yeah, that's where Hinduism came from. Okay. Okay. So, I did think I read that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, some things, um, of course, the Vedics are the religious texts. Um, how many gods or goddesses do the Hindus believe in? Thousands. Re reincarnations. Of, yeah. The okay, is it a polytheistic or a monotheistic? Monotheistic. Mono. Mono. Let me give you a little bit of, depending on which sect you're talking to. Definitely, true, yeah. that as well. Because like, yeah, right. yeah, because you have, for instance, like with, um, if I can go back, because I don't want to, I don't want to say it wrong. Um, like with, you know, the Vaishnavas, they believe in many different gods, but they believe that all of those gods are incarnations, I guess would be the right word, versions of Vishnu, who is the Supreme Lord. Then you have Shaktism, where they believe that the Devi, the goddess, is supreme. And then you have Smartism, where they believe that the ultimate, you know, form of the divine ultimate god is Brahman, and Brahman is not like one god or one goddess. Brahman is like a, an overarching like like force. It's a it's um it's genderless, it's infinite, it's not one God. So so generally people regard Hinduism as polytheistic because there are so many gods revered across the board, but like you said, it definitely depends on the sect that you're talking to. Okay, one last thing and I'll let you go. Where is Mahatma Gandhi, not Muhammad? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> um you talked about the Ramayan. Well I have yeah. Hindu friends, it's Ramayana. Really? Yes. Oh. Um, it's like the Mahabharata, it's not the Mahabharata. Um, the Ramayana is a religious text. What are the other 
There's three. Do you know the other three? The other two? I just gave you one. Oh, the vicious, the vicious. Yeah. Now the Vedas are the holy texts, the, the holy writings of the Hindu. Okay, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, and the uh, Bhagavad Gita. Those are the holy texts, the holy writings. Um, so, what you didn't really talk much about was Dharma, Karma, reincarnation, or Ahimsa. Do you know what they are? Yeah. Well, I know like reincarnation. There's many reincarnates uh, of Brahma. For a but what about people? Yeah. So they believe that like people, based on your karma. Yeah, it would be like when you died, you would come back as something else. Like if you were a really bad person and everything, you could come back as like a rat or something. But then, not like actually, but. And then like if you were good and everything, then you come back as something more like praise and everything. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys.